All right, guys, welcome to this video on how to deal with bid ask spreads in Forex trading and how do you calculate spreads in your trading orders. So why is this important? Because, you know, many people who start trading Forex, they may experience some of the following issues, which is a bit different from trading stocks, for example, right? So many traders say, you know, I experience a time when I've got an open trade and I get stopped out. Right? The, the broker says I hit my stop loss and I exit with a loss, but the price did not even reach my stop loss level. You know, how can it be? So it's a very common experience in Forex trading. Another example is that you set a profit target and the price seems to reach your profit target, but it doesn't trigger your order to exit with a profit. You know, another example would be you place a pending buy order. Okay. And the, the price, before it reaches that level, the broker buys in for you. So your order gets triggered even before the price reaches that, that intended entry price. So if you experience the following, uh, you're not alone. Many Forex traders experience these things. And what do they do when they experience it? <coughs> they blame the broker. They say the broker's out to get me. It's a scam. You know, they come up with all kinds of conspiracy theories how the brokers are ganging up to take away their money. And that's all rubbish. That's all nonsense. Because every single day, they are profitable Forex traders and there are many unprofitable forex traders. And the profitable traders use the same brokers as everyone else. So they don't blame the broker. They don't blame their luck. They know that the reason this happens to new forex traders is not because of luck or the broker. It's because of the bid R spread. So you've got to understand the bid R spread and how it affects uh, placing orders in forex trading. So let's take a very close look. <coughs> now, many people, when you look at the chart on the MT4 platform, for example, they just think there's only one price, and the price is what they see um, in the candlestick patterns. But the reality is that there's not one price, there are two prices. There are two prices at any one time. And the price you see on the chart is the bid price. Is the bid price. What you don't see on the chart very often is the ask price. And the ask price is what causes many of the confusion and problems in trading. Now, it's a bit <coughs> different in trading stocks because when you trade stocks, your orders, like your, a stop order and a limit order, they are triggered based on the last closing price or the last transacted price of the market. But in Forex trading, your limit orders and stop orders are not triggered based on the last transacted price. No, no, no. They are triggered based on the bid and ask price. So that's the difference. So you have to understand what's the difference. So... Now, if you're looking at, for example, a chart, and we're all taught to read candlesticks, right? So, for example, uh, when you see a bullish candle, what does it mean? This is the opening price. Um, that's the closing price, right? And that's the high, and that's the low. That's for a bullish candle. For a bearish candle, we learn, hey, this is the opening price, right? That's the closing price, blah, 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 okay? So, what you're seeing there is the bid price, you're not seeing the ask price because the ask price is hidden. You've got to activate the ask price on your trading platform. And I'll show you, show you how to do it in a short while. Okay. So <coughs> right now, for example, you can see based on the chart, the price is here. Right. This is the price that people see, which is 7, uh, 1.7227.8. Uh, uh, All right. But what you don't realize is that there's another price, which is this red line. And this red line is the ask price. So I repeat, on the chart, what you see is the bid price. But you have to look at this red line, which you have to activate on your trading platform, and that's called the ask price. So the bid is 7227, but the ask is 7228, uh, which is one pip higher than what you see on the charts. Okay. So the ask price is always higher than the bid price. And the difference is known as the spread. Okay? Now, you can also see it on this part of the chart. <clears throat> For example, if you look at Euro New Zealand, this currency pair, you can see um, sell 7228.1, buy 7229.1. So what you see on the right is the ask price. What you see on the left is the bid price. Again, if you get confused, always remember the ask price is always higher than the bid price. So what do these two prices mean? Basically, the ask price is the price where 
the market is willing to sell for uh, willing to sell at all right this is the price they're asking for okay <clears throat> so if I'm a buy if I want to buy the currency pair I have to buy from a seller so I buy at the ask price so whenever you buy you're buying at the ask price okay now the bid price is the price <coughs> that the market is willing to buy at okay so if I'm a seller I'm selling to a buyer so I gotta sell to the bid price so the bid price is the price that you sell at. Okay. So always remember, the moment you buy and sell immediately, you're losing money, right? Because of the spread. So if I buy right now, I'm buying at seven two two nine, right? Because I'm buying at the ask. Always remember, you buy at the ask. If I sell it immediately, I'm selling at the bid. So I'm buying at seven two two nine. I'm selling at seven two two eight immediately. Guess what? I lose one pip, right? Because one pip is the spread. The spread is the difference between the bid and the ask price. Now, spreads differ very differently uh, based on the broker you use and the time of the day. Now, when the spreads are very thin, like it's like a one pip or less than one pip, no worries. The trouble is when the, the spread gets big, like one pip or two pip or three pips or five pips, that's when we start having issues. Okay? So when do spreads widen? Well, first of all, you've got to use a good broker. Right? Some brokers... The spreads are always very wide because when you use brokers that are kind of like market makers, they quote their own bid and ask price. So they can quote whatever the heck they want and they can purposely quote a very big uh, bid to ask spread so that it's really hard for you to make money. So I tend to use brokers that are known as ECN brokers. So ECN brokers, they don't mark up on the spread. Um, basically, what they show you on the platform is what is provided by the market. So the spreads are very thin. All right, so first thing is to always use the right broker, especially use an ECN broker, a very tight spread, so you don't have this issue, number one. Number two, now even if you use a good broker, like I use a good broker, right, with very tight spreads, but some of the currency pairs have wider spreads. So if you trade a common currency pair like Euro USD or Dollar Yen, these are the very liquid pairs, so the spread's very thin. But when you trade a pair like Euro New Zealand or Pound New Zealand, which is more exotic, right? The spreads tend to be wider, like, you know, two or three pips sometimes. The next thing, it depends on the time of the day. So during certain times of the day when the market's very active, during uh, the London Open or the New York Open, spreads are very thin. But if you trade outside of those uh, usual, um, you know, active trading hours, spreads can be pretty wide. So I'll talk more about that in a while. So bear in mind that spreads can be as low as 0.1 pip. Right, during the right time, you know, small spreads, you, you don't have to worry about it. But times when the, the spread gets you know, to two pips or more, then you have to factor in the, the spread in calculating your entry, stop loss, and target price. And yes, there are times when there's a, volatile, uh, there's a lot of volatility in the markets, especially when major news is released, like interest rates or you know, inflation data, spreads can widen to a crazy 30 or 40 pips. Right? And you've got to be very careful when you're trading during those periods or avoid them if you can, if you do not know how to handle them. Okay? Okay, so before we go any further, again, you have to be very clear about this concept. You always buy on the ask and you sell on the bid. Always remember that. Buy on the ask, sell on the bid. That's right, you got it. Okay? So let me show you a few examples of how spreads can differ across you know, currency pairs. So again, the most... Um, commonly traded currency pair is the euro usd and again if you use the right broker you can see the spread is very tight so i'm using halifax australia all right and you can see that right now as i'm trading the spread is uh really really small right so the ask price remember the ask price is always the higher price so there's the ask on the right and the bits on the left all right and you can see the ask price is 1686.9. The bid is 1686.7. So what's the spread? The spread is not even one pip. The spread is 0 0.3 pips. So in times like that, you don't have to worry that much because it's negligible uh, difference, right? So again, where can you find the spread? Again, when you look at the chart, you can normally see it on the top left-hand corner over here. So you can look at the spread over here. Now, if you click uh, order, new order, like you're placing an order, 
uh, you get this box that pops out, right? And you can also see the spread over here, right? So this is the ask, and that's the bid. You can also see over here, right? So the red one is the ask, and the blue one is the bid. Always remember, the ask is always higher than the bid. And again, you buy at the ask and you sell at the bid. You know, just keep remembering that, right? Now, if you look at the chart itself, again, over here, you can see the chart. And I mentioned before that when you look at the price on the chart, the candlesticks, what are you looking at? You're looking at the bid price, not the ask price. You're looking at the bid price. So the ask price is always a bit higher than the ask price. So in this case, the bid price which is what you see on the candle, is 1686.7, for example, 1686.7. But this red line, which is what we call the ask line, right? you have to activate the ask line on your MT4 platform, is slightly higher, 1686.9. So again, uh, the spread is really thin, but there is a spread for this case. Let's look at a currency pair with a wider spread. <clears throat> so this is Euro New Zealand, right? And again, it's more of an exotic pair, not that as much traded, so the spread is one pip. So again, you can see the ask price is 7231.7. The bid is 7230.7. So again, what's the difference? It's one pip. So that's my spread. Again, you can look at it on your order uh, placement uh, box. Uh, that's the ask, that's the bid. Okay, that's the ask, that's the bid. Again, on the chart, you can see that uh, based on the candlestick, the price is supposed to be over here, which is the uh, bid price. And the ask price is higher than the bid price. And again, you have to activate the ask line to uh, look at it. All right. Let's take a look at the MT4 platform and again, where you can find the bid and the ask. Right? So again, uh, over here, you can click on this arrow that will show you, again, the bid and ask price right now. So again, what's the ask? That's the ask, 7231.8. The bid is 7230.87. So again, uh, we have a spread of one pip right now as I'm looking at this currency pair, All right? And again, if you click this uh, new order box, right, again, you have that, right? You've got the ask price, you've got a bid price. You've got the ask price, you have the bid price. And again, you can activate the ask line on the charts, okay, simply by doing this. Give me a second. So just right click on your chart, right click, go to properties, and click on ask line. Show me the ask line. Okay, boom. There you go. So once you do that, you can see the ask is the red line. And the bid is the candle, right? The price on the candle. There you go. So let's take a look at how we factor in the spread when placing orders. Now, first, let me talk about when you're going long, right? So when we are going long, it means we are buying in anticipation of selling at a higher price. So always remember that when you go long for Forex, you always enter at the ask price. Because when you enter the market, you're buying, right? You're buying to go long. So you buy at the ask price. And you exit by selling at the bid price. So if you take a look at this chart over here, you can see again, <clears throat> when we go long, we are entering a buy order. So we always buy at the ask price. Now after you buy, there are two things that can happen. You either sell for profit or sell for a loss. So if you sell for a loss, it means you hit your stop loss and you're selling at the bid price. Okay, if it hits your profit target, you're selling at the bid price. So once again, remember, for going long, <clears throat> you enter at the ask and you exit at the bid, whether is it a take profit bid or a stop loss bid. So let's take a look at an example over here. So if I'm going to take, for example, a trade. So this is, uh, as you can see, the price is on an uptrend and it's bouncing off the 18 moving average, bouncing the 18, 18, 18. So I call this surfing the 18 moving average. So whenever I see the price surfing a moving average, I'm looking for a pullback, and I'm gonna enter when I see a new high being made in the market, all right? So over here, you can see that the price is pulling back, right? Pulling back, 
And <clears throat> what I have here is I've got a, a bullish pin bar, which uh, signals a potential reversal back to the upside. Okay, So <clears throat> when I want to go long, what do I do? I want to place my buy order just above the high of this candle. Right? I'm placing a buy stop order just above the high of this candle. But remember, do not place your buy order based on the candle because the candle is the bid price. Right? Remember, when we are buying, we are buying at the ask. We are not buying at the bid. So you always have to buy based on where you think the red line is going to be, which is the ask line. Okay? So... If I want to buy above the high of this candle, for example, in other words, if my intended entry price is 9455, okay, if I want to buy at 9455, I cannot place my buy order at 9455. No. Why? <clears throat> because my order will be triggered by the ask price, not the bid price. So I have to look at the spread of this currency pair. So for example, uh, in this case, if the spread is one pip, that means the ask price is one pip above the bid price, right? We've got a one pip spread. What do I do? I have to place my buy order one pip above my intended entry price. All right. So instead of putting at 9455, my buy stop order has to be 9456. Make sense? Why? Because if you place your order at 9455, <clears throat> right? That means the moment the ask line hits 9455, you'll be triggered into the trade, even though the actual price on the chart doesn't has not reached there yet. That's why many people say, hey, I placed my buy order at this price and the candle hasn't reached it, but it triggered me to buy. Why? Well, because the ask line has hit your order. Okay? So as a result, you have to place your order not just above this candle, but you have to add the spread as well which is where the R sign is going to be. So I'm going to enter, in this case, at 9456. Make sense? Okay. Now, for buying, when you're going long, your stop loss and profit target is very straightforward because your stop loss and profit target, again, is based on the bid price, which is what you see on the chart. So you simply place your stop loss, like in my case, my strategy is I place my stop loss just below the low of this candle. All right, so I just... Place it just below the candle, that's fine because that's the bid price. So in this case, my bid price is 9446. <clears throat> What's important is when you calculate your stop loss distance, you have to know your stop loss distance before calculating your position size. So your stop loss distance should be from the ask price, which is 9456, to 9446. Okay, so 9456 minus 9446. My stop loss distance is 10 pips. Okay, so I repeat, to calculate your stop loss distance, take the ask price on your entry to the bid price, which is the price on the chart. And that's, uh, in this case, 10 pips. Okay, so where do I place my profit target? I place my profit target again um, at least, you know, 1.5 or two times my stop loss distance. So if I'm risking 10 pips, I want to make at least 15 pips or at least 20 pips. So that's how we place our orders when we're going long. All right, so let's take a look at how you place orders for short trades. Remember, when you're going short, it means you are entering the market by selling. In anticipation, it's going to go down and you buy it at a lower price to make a profit, right? So when you're going short, you're entering by selling first and buying later. So when you're going short, you always enter by selling at the bid price. So for going short, you enter at the bid price. And when you exit, either at a loss or at a profit, you are buying at the ask price. Now, when you're shorting, it's a bit more tricky than when you're going long, and we will see why in a short while. So once again, look at this chart, and you can see, again, when we enter a short trade, we are selling at the bid price. So when you enter a short trade, it's very straightforward because you're, you're entering at a bid price, which is the price on the chart that you see. So that's pretty easy. The tricky part is where you place the stop loss and the profit target. Many people place the stop loss and profit target based on the chart that they see, based on the candlestick pattern, and that's wrong. Because remember, when you are exiting a short trade, you're exiting at the ask price, which is not what you see on the chart. 
it is that red line, that R line above the chart level. Okay, so remember that your stop loss and profit target must always be placed based on the ask price and not based on the bid price. So because of this common mistake, many traders, they go in, right, and they place a stop loss at, at a certain level, right, be above the previous swing high, for example, and the price goes up and the price doesn't reach their stop loss, but they get stopped out. They say, what happened? Well, it's because although on the chart, the bid price did not reach their stop loss, but the ask price has reached the stop loss, and that's why they get stopped out of the trade. Because they're not looking at the ask price, they're looking at the chart price, which is wrong. Similarly, if you put a profit target, and you see, hey, the price is coming down, and the price has hit my profit target, but it did not trigger to take profit. Why? Because although the price you see on the chart is the bid price, the bid price has hit your profit target, yes, but the ask price has not yet hit the profit target. Because the, the ask price is always above the bid price, which is that red line. Okay? So because of that, you have to place your stop losses and profit targets a bit differently from what you may have been taught. Okay? <clears throat> so this is a trade example, for example, and um, I entered this trade at the green line, right? So that's my entry price. So again, I enter at the bid price, which is 8211. So again, I enter based on the low of this bearish engulfing candle. So I see that the price has rallied up, it has found resistance at the 50 moving average, and it created a bearish engulfing candle. So I say, okay, I'm going into the trade the moment the price goes below the low of the bearish engulfing candle. So I place my entry price just below the low of this candle. And again, the candle you see is the bid price. And since I'm entering on the bid price, I can just place my order based on the candle I see. So that's again straightforward, right? Okay, but when I place my stop loss, tricky. <clears throat> Remember when I place my stop loss, I want to place my stop loss just above the high of the recent swing high, okay? But you cannot place it based on the chart you see. You have to place it at the chart plus the spread, all right? Because you gotta account for the spread. So in this case, uh, my spread is one pip for this particular currency pair, right? So if you look at the bid ask price, the difference is one pip. So my stop loss will be at, let me just show it here. So for example, imagine if <clears throat> I wanna place my stop loss above the swing high. I wanna place my stop loss at 8220, for example. What I gotta do is I've got to add one pip extra. So it'll be 8220 plus one pip. So my actual stop loss that I place will be 8221. Got it? Alright, so always remember when you're going short, do not place your stop loss at where you want it to be on the chart. You have to add the spread. Whether is it one pip or two pip depending on your broker. Okay? And your stop loss distance that you calculate is from 8221 to 8211 in this case. So my stop loss is 11 pips. So again, if I'm risking 11 pips, I want to make, you know, for example, 22 pips, risking one to make two, okay? Now again, my profit target. Now many people, they place the profit target <clears throat> at, for example, a certain level, right? And when the price reaches there, they don't, they don't get it triggered, right? So for the take profit, always remember, that you have to add one pip to your profit target, okay? So if you intend to take profit at 8191, do not place your take profit at 8191. Place it at 8191 plus the spread. So in case it's one pip in this case, so my take profit will be 8192. Make sense, all right? So it's a bit tricky uh, for the short trade, but that's how you place it. So few, um, few important points to know. So like I said, <clears throat> if you trade at a time when the spreads are very narrow, that's fine. Don't worry too much if it's less than one pip. But the moment the spread is more than one pip, it's like you know one pip or two or three pips, you have to take into account the spread when placing orders. So a few uh, important rules. Number one, avoid brokers with wide spreads. Okay. So again, I personally prefer to use ECN brokers where they do not mark up on the spread. So the spread you see is based on the market not based on what the broker has marked up, okay? So ECM brokers, they, they charge a fixed commission, but the spreads are very thin. So 
Personally, I use halifax.com.au as an Australian broker. Uh, not everyone can use it, right? Um, I think if you're in the US, you can't use them. You have to use a different broker, but you can send me an email and I can suggest some of the brokers that you can use if you're interested, all right? So that's number one, use the right broker. Number two, avoid holding a position during times when spreads will widen. There are certain times of the day when the spread, the spread could widen suddenly. And that happens when the broker closes for the day and opens for the next day, all right? And for many brokers, this happens at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time, which is New York time. Now, I'm in Singapore. So to me, it's 5 a.m. Singapore time. So I always avoid holding a trade at 5 a.m. Singapore time. So if I'm already in a trade, I will always exit before 5 a.m. Singapore time when the spreads widen. Because the spreads widen, it could hit my stop loss, right? Uh, because of the wide spread, okay? So I always exit before... Uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. The next thing to be careful of is every day before you trade, go to forexfactory.com and take a look at the major news events. So major news are highlighted in red. And when these news events are released, the price can move suddenly up or down or sideways. Right? And the spreads tend to widen dramatically. So the spreads could go from 1 pip to 30 pips to 40 pips. Okay. Now, if I'm already in a normal trade, I will always exit my trade before the news is released, okay? In case the spreads widen and it hits my stop loss, even though the, the, the price on the chart did not reach there, okay? But of course, I have a strategy where I scalp the news. Now, that's a different thing. When I scalp the news, I have to also take into account the really wide spreads. And in my training program, in my advanced Forex trading course, I teach people how to manage their risk in widening spreads. So that's only for that specific strategy of scalping the news. But if you're trading a normal strategy, like you're trading the bull flag surfing strategy or the trend contribution strategy or the range strategy, these are all the strategies I use, then we always exit before a major news is released. All right, so I hope this helps you to understand spreads and to calculate uh, your Forex profits with a lot more precision. It's Adam Koo and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, do click the subscribe button for more videos if you'd like to find out about our online professional forex and stock trading courses, do visit piranaprofits.com for international students. And for our uh, students in Asia, we have our live stock trading and investing courses at wealthacademyglobal.com. This is Adam Koo signing off. May the markets be reviewed.